everyone is very welcome and uh, we thank God for your lives and we give God all the glory and all the honor for bringing you here today because if you were not alive you would not have been able to make it this place God has given you strength and the power to lead you from home to this place. You can never, never, never take that for granted. So this morning, by God's grace, we have a word from the Lord that we titled, How do you appear unto God? How do you appear unto God? Let me say this. Christianity is a matter of your relationship with your God. And uh, if you will take that relationship serious, and you have to take it serious. I know that a lot of Christians are not taking this Christian journey very serious because they don't really know that, you know, they don't believe that hell is real, that God is real. So they are like, Okay, let me also be part of it. But if you truly believe it, then you would take every single word of God very seriously and you will run your journey accordingly. I don't want to die and come to find out that everything that I have been preaching, you know, is true. I believe that it is true and I have testimonies but this is something that is very personal. Everybody, as a child of God, must have your personal journey with the Lord and have also your personal testimonies. And you have to take it very serious. So, when we say, how do you appear unto God? It is because First Samuel, chapter 16, First Samuel, Chapter 16 and the verse is 7. In King James, we read, The Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Amen and amen. Okay. Too many of you are looking at me. If you brought your Bible, lift up your Bible. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, so it is getting better. Next week, it will get better and better. Your Bible and your notebooks. First Samuel 16 and 7. In the middle of it, it says, The Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And let me read the New Century Version of the same First Samuel 16, 7. It says, God does not see the same way people see. God does not see the same way people see. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at the heart. I don't know how clear you want this to be. This is plain English. But then what does it mean for us to learn that God does not look the same way that man looks? It says that God looks at the heart, but man since man cannot see the heart, man is not looking at the heart of the person. Man looks at the outward appearance, the outside of someone. And this is very dangerous. This statement, the scripture here is not put here for us to know how God only looks at things. But also for you and I, 
to understand that we must live our lives and knowing that this is how man looks and this is how God looks. But then how, because it's, it's two, how do I live my life? Do I live trying to be so mindful of what people will look on me and say, looking meaning that they look and they say things. But God, who is looking at the heart, which one do I choose? Do I choose to go how man looks or how God looks? This is key. It's key because if you're going to live your life and be thinking that what people will see of you and will say of you is more important than what God really thinks of you, then you're going to live trying to please people and trash the view of God. Simply that's what it is. Uh, it's dangerous. But then if you decide that you are going to side with God, so you will take that which God sees to be very important for your life. But then you will not be very careful about what people will say and what people will see and all that. It's a choice that one has to make. And you have to make that choice. There is nothing like in between. Nothing like that. Because if you're going to please men, you cannot please God. And if you please God, you cannot please men. So you must make a choice. You have to, now that you know how God sees, and if you have decided to live according to how God sees you, everything of your life is all inner. In other words, you care more about that which goes to the heart, that which the heart portrays, than what people will look of you and say about you and everything else. It's, it's so important. It is important because if you are going to live in the sight of God, your ways are not going to please to many people. To people, in, this is what the word of God says. But then, how are you going to feel about it? When you will be hearing criticism about your outward appearance, are you going to be bothered about that? Or you will just say, well, I have made the choice to live in the sight of God. What man would say? Does not matter in any way. What man will say of me, of my outward appearance, does not matter because man is not going to judge me according to what is inside me, what is in my heart. But then, it's okay. Let them say whatever that they want to say. I am okay. I am this. I am that. It is fine, but I have to be careful about what God sees of me. This is it. This is it. So important. You're going to face these challenges, and you know how our continents will be falling quickly when we are touched by criticism. This is it. There is, I consider this statement to be so important for your Christian journey, for your life. I was saying, I mean, this whole week, I was like, because of the events that had been happening, I said, my goodness, life is something. Life is something. I ran into, uh, I was saying this last Friday, I ran into a friend of mine's wife. We lost contact for a little while. And this is a top politician here in America. And this man will come to the store and, oh, Pastor Charles, how are you? And 
when my wife came, how they received my wife, and, and on and on and on. But then, meeting the wife, and the wife telling me about what had happened, the change, and showing me the picture of the man that I knew. I couldn't believe how life can be turned around just like that. Just like that. It is showing you that no matter how much you try to protect how people see you and, how, in, in, and what people think of you, a time will come that you will not have any control of that. Somebody should say amen for me. A time comes that you will not have control of that. As much as you want to put on for people to see, you might not even have the ability to put it on, even if you have. Even if you have, wisdom must be applied. But then if you serve this God and you care more about how God sees you and you will not be too much worried about what is going on around you and what is being said around you and uh, including even your own husband and wife, your children, you name it. But if you have decided that you will go God's way, that may the Lord see your heart, may the Lord see your heart at all times, and may God be your judge in all situations. You know what it means? It means that you might come to a situation whereby somebody seeing your outward appearance and everything that, you know, how things look, I mean, how things look around you and be judging you. Meanwhile, you are completely and totally innocent from your heart. And as much as you try to defend yourself, they will not take it and believe you. But then, you take the blame. But at the end of it, you stand and say that, you know what? God knows my heart. God knows my heart. This is what we are talking about here. This is what this statement means. How do you appear unto God? If you will decide to live your life here and only taking into consideration the judgment of God over your life, how God sees you, how is it before the Lord? How can, you know, last week I was mentioning uh, the story of Joseph. I will bring it forth so that we can really go in details, scripture by scripture, and find out what sustained this man. But what we know about how Joseph, young man, 20 years old, the time of Moses, found himself at the, at the house, Potiphar's house, and the wife, beautiful wife, and said that, lie down with me. And every single day, constantly, the same statement coming, and you are in that house. And the woman harassing this young man. And the man said, no, it's not because I fear your husband. But because God is watching me, because God is here, because God is seeing my heart. This is it. These are the things that when you have your eyes set on, it is not about being smart when people say you are stupid. It is not about taking that corruption and also come to a high standard. But then you are saying that I have a God who has a plan. Who has a plan for my life? You can imagine. This will never fail. If Joseph would have gone with Potiphar's wife's plan for his life, but then Joseph would not have ascended where God took him. There is nobody in the surface, no man, no matter how worthy the person might be, can decide the best and do the best for your life than what God has planned for you. Than what God had planned for your life. So don't be cheap in exchanging your destiny with chicken chains. Chicken chains. 
It comes with trial. It comes with taking blames. It comes with, you know, looking stupid and unwise in the sight of human beings. But then life is not about human beings. Life is all about God. It's a fact. It's a purpose and a determination of what you have decided to live for. This is it. This is it. We can be coming to church and be preaching a type of messages that will make you be jumping and everything else and you'll be going on and on empty until the day you die and you make it to hell. Or you can decide that, you know what? I want to go God's way and have life. I want to go God's way and have life. The true life is not about this one. When a man is good at word, when somebody is a good person, all that people say is that you are a good person. But people cannot tell what is in your heart because you can act contrary to what your heart thinks. Have you seen somebody else was telling me yesterday, say, ah, pastor, haven't you seen people that have married their enemies? Married your enemy. The same house. Your husband is your enemy. Your wife is your enemy. And yet, have you not seen marriage of interest? And one is coping until that day that one will die for the will. And they keep talking to you about the will and everything else. You name it. That is man. Because the activities of the heart... Man is speaking one thing and the heart is saying another thing. We thank God. We thank God to be God because that which man cannot hear, the words of the heart, God hears it. And God sees it. Amen and amen. You know, it's, it's, it's such an amazing protection over one's life. Because when you have come to a point whereby your full purpose of life is to be living pleasing God. What people will say doesn't matter. What they will think does not matter. I want to live pleasing God. But then what they will do also does not matter because the God that has a plan for my life, his vision over my life is a vision that is planned with me. Therefore, as far as the vision of God is alive upon my life, nobody can take away that vision and therefore kill me out of the vision. All that I'm saying is that it comes with protection. You'll be living your life thinking constantly that God has your back. The Lord is with you. No matter what people will say, what they will do. <laughs> I said, you know, you should pray and tell God that may the Lord end you well. Somebody should say amen. I don't know how you'll be hearing this word and you will not say amen. I am praying that you may end up well. The beginning is not a problem. And the middle is not a problem. But it is the end. How do you end? It is only God that has amazing and wonderful plan to see one through that plan and bring you to his expectation. Complete expectation, the end of it all. For I know the thought that I think toward you, thought of peace, Jeremiah 29, 11, and not evil to bring you to the expected end. It is only God that can do that. Amen and amen. The heart. So now, watch this. How is your inside when you are hearing this message? Matthew 23, and the verse is 28. Matthew 23, verse 28. It says, 
Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You see what I just said? You appear righteous unto men, but inwardly your heart is full of what? Hypocrisy and iniquity. Iniquity is sin. So this is something that you cannot tell. Man can project himself to appear righteous in the sight of people. But inside, inside, inside that people don't see. Life is dangerous. And human beings are dangerous. It's only when the person says it that you are coming out to judge. But we thank God for that because there is a judge who sees what you don't you don't say who hears what you don't say and who sees what you don't show that God that God if you decide that you're gonna live your life that way we are talking about life this ministry that is all that we talk about life wisdom to live and not your life be crushed by the devil in the new century version of Matthew 23, 28, it says, people look at you and think you are good. People look at you and think you are good. You know why? Because of your outward deeds. You are bringing this one, you are doing this, you are doing that. But we said it before, that a woman can be living with her enemy. And a man can also be living with his enemy. It's a choice. It's a choice. People look at you and think you are good, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and evil. On the inside. So every time that God reveals the spiritual situations of our lives. We are full of surprises. We are full of what? Surprises. Why? How can such a person do this to me? If it was only according to man's sight, you would never have thought that this one would be part of your evil. If it was according to man's judgment, you will never position yourself and pinpoint that this person can ever hurt me in life. But then God says the heart is full of hypocrisy. You know what the word, the word hypocr hypocrite is not, it's not an English word. They brought it from Greek. It means actor, actor, somebody who is acting. You are acting, you are not yourself. You act, act this person. And you act. That is hypocrite. An actor. So all along, your husband has been acting around you. All along, your wife has been acting around you. I said your husband and wife because he's the closest and the children has been acting around you. The person has been full of hypocrisy all around you. And all you see is all that man can see at word appearance. But the heart, the heart knows that you are acting. This is the reason why I title this site, I mean this site to be, how is your inside? It's a question that nobody can answer for you. You are the only one that can answer this question. How is your inside? Your outside man might say that you are a good person. Man must also or might also say that you are such an evil person because your ways are not pleasing what they want to see. Man can criticize you. But then how is your inside? Because the inside is what God is seeing. This is it. This is it. I don't live before men. I live before God. And if I live before God, then everything that I do must be pleasing to God. 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gospel. If you, if you will live your life, would this settle in your heart? You'll be going in peace. You'll be going in, on your daily activities and your daily life in peace. You will not be troubled by what people will consider and say. And all. This is it. People always have something to say. People always have something to say because there is always an outward appearance. So why don't you just decide that from now onwards you want your inside to be pleasing in the sight of God. If you are good outward or outside and you are good inside, well, you alone can answer that question. But if you are pretending, pretending, actor, Bible says that you also alone can answer. We are to answer to God, by the way. So let me say this. Every human being is to answer to God one day or another. You will stand before that judgment. So if you consider that to be important, then you will make the wise decision to live your life according to what God thinks of you. Amen and amen. Good. Second Corinthians chapter 3. And the verse is 15. Listen to this. If you have been in the situation whereby you were, you were able to answer the question, how is your inside? And now you have an answer. Whatever that it is. Let me tell you the kingdom principle because God is not condemning you. But it is, it, it, it is not too late. We are still alive. And something can be done about it. Kim James version of 2 Corinthians 3.15. It says, But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Talking about the law. When he say Moses, he's talking about the law. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. A new century says, even today, when they read the law or when they read the law of Moses, there is a covering over their minds. Even today. How do you think this scripture applies to your life? Okay, it is simple because since we are living every single day, he said the law of Moses is the past. So are you the type that look at your past and then judging yourself today according to what people will see and say? Are you of that type? Or have you come to a point whereby you said, you know what? I have been pretending enough all along. This past had not helped me. So, since I am hearing that I am still in business to change and God is not condemning me and he's on my side to help me change, then let me do something about it. If that is the case, you are not going to pretend to put covers. The veil is still on their heart. When you talk about veil, you are talking about covering. That is why he said their minds are still covered. You pretend and you act and you are hypocrites because your mind is always about 
what people will see, what people will say. And uh, this one, <laughs> even when you are, I have been saying these things all along. Even the clothes that you are buying, you are not buying that cloth because it pleases you. You have great pleasure wearing it. But because you are thinking of what people will say, this one, it brings my shape out. It brings your shape out for who? For people to see. Yes. So every time that you wear it, <laughs> how is it? You want confirmation of what covers your, your mind and the state of your heart. This is it. And it goes for everything. Everything. We are called most of the time if we are not, we are not, you know, godly minded. It's all about the sight. Outward appearance. Outward appearance. Outward appearance. And you are living in your life in struggles. You are living your life with a lot of pressure pressure a lot because you cannot come to church with the clothes that maybe you wear or you wore that clothes for the past three Sundays consecutively and the fourth Sundays you said no enough is enough I'm not saying that God had not blessed you I don't know I don't know if man is judging you because you are always wearing the same clothes and this is something that is bothering you, the fact that you are wearing the same clothes, let me tell you, when I was in university, I used to have, and this was, that, that, that man was my director. You'll be see, I mean, from the time that he started, you know, supervising my work, I see this man with the same shirt, the same suit, trousers, shoe, the same. Until the day that I was invited to his house. Then I realized that this man is not poor as we are thinking in the university that he's a poor man. I saw the same suit lined up. Amazing closet. The same shoe lined up. Be careful. Be very careful. It means nothing. It means nothing. The man was every single day very clean. But yet, every time we see him, he said, he's coming. Every time that we students were seeing him, we were seeing him like, he's coming. The same rikiki man, he's coming. Always the same. You will not know. You will not know. You will not know. It means zero. What people can say and what people can think. But God, who sees the heart? Who sees the heart? Take away that veil. How can the veil be taken away? But then, in verse 16 of 2 Corinthians 3, King James, it says, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. A new century says, but when a person changes and follows the Lord, that covering is taken away. Somebody should say amen for me. Scriptures are sweet and powerful. Life. If you have made the decision from your heart that now you are no more going to allow people to toss you up and down 
and push you here, push you there, tell you what color you must wear, tell you how you must eat, tell you how you must sit, tell you how you must relate to your husband. But you are more careful about what God says. Then, he said, turn your life to God's counsel and everything of you shall be changed. Shall be changed. That is why I'm always saying, I said, please don't worry. Do not argue. Take the blame. But you follow the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's just a matter of time. Most of these problems are going to be solved by themselves. Amen and amen. If you are going to live your life that way, it's not everything that you should respond to. It's not everything that you should show them that you are smart. It's not everything that you should argue. It's not everything that you must show your color. But learn the wisdom of God. Sometimes, few words and close it. And let them think whatever that they think. They will not know until that day God decides to show you. They will not. You want the insight to change. You cannot do it by yourself. He said you have to turn it to God. Then the Lord will change it. You have to turn it to God. Then the Lord will change it. How are you going to change? You have been pretending, acting all along. Hypocrisy and maybe evil. Or people know you as such a good person. But now, you know how people say you are good, right? And when they say you are good, it's because it favors them. All the time. The day that it will not favor them, that will be the day that you are evil. The day that your decision will not favor that person. Say so no. Hmm. And they will talk about you. The same person that used to praise you is now going to talk to you and say, your countenance fallen. Simply because you have decided now to live for God and do that which is right in the sight of Almighty God. But then, that is your decision to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have made the decision to follow Jesus, Jesus said, I will take away that veil. That veil over your mind, that veil over your heart. I will take it away. You will not, God will bring you to a point whereby you are no more bothered by what people will say and what people will do. I have been living and I just know, I said, it doesn't matter. What matters is what God thinks of me. What matters is what God thinks of me. But therefore, humility will be full of your life. You are able to bend down, to clean. When they ask you, go down. You are able to go down. But when you are too high for yourself, how can this small boy tell me to go down? Do you know who I am? There is a problem. There is a problem. It's a work delegated in the power of God. When it shall turn unto the Lord, when you will make the decision that you are going to surrender your life and live according to the sight of God. He said, every veil. You know, the veil, I said it, is the covering, right? It is also meaning every single thing. I mean, the whole package. Whatever that anybody has done over your life to keep you in grave, to keep you in captivity, to keep, to keep you in bondage, to keep you surprised and stressed. When the Lord said, it shall be taken away, it means it shall be taken away. 
That is why I said it comes with the power. It's a work that God can do. Only God can do it. But you must make the decision to turn it unto the Lord. To turn it unto the Lord. They will see you and say that, oh, my dear brother, we don't see you these days in our meetings. Something has been changed. You have made the decision to follow the Lord now. Sister, oh, these days, your laces are not like your, your, your choices before. They are telling you something. They are, they are being wise to tell you something. Your choices before are not like now. Something has been changing. Will you come to a point whereby you will start seeing what is priorities in life and be living your life majoring on major things rather than living your life and majoring on minor stuff? Major things are that which God considers to be important. But the minor stuff that is man display. Man can lift you very, very high. And you can sustain yourself also very high and pretend that you are high. But then, when life brings you low and you cannot maintain that standard anymore, man will not have any problem to also drop you. That is man. The covering shall be taken away when the persons when the person changes and follow the Lord. But then in verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Somebody should say amen. You see, you quote this scripture all the time. Can you possibly see under what context this scripture comes? The context of the scripture. This is it. Make the decision to turn everything onto God. When you have turned it onto the Lord, the power, he said, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That is why I told you, I said, when you turn it unto the Lord, be assured that God is the one that is going to protect you. God will protect you. God will protect your integrity. God will protect you. The Lord will wake you out. And the time is coming, your honor is going to come out. Your dignity will come out. Your image will come out. Everything that man had shattered in your life. When the Lord is, is done with you, you will be free. I said you will be free. Your children are also going to be free. And your generations are going to be impacted with that freedom. This is what God is capable to do. That's, that, that Lord said that spirit is the Lord. Holy Ghost at work. Holy Ghost at work. This is the assignment of the Holy Ghost. He is working from within out. Everything of you now is about the inside. The Lord is talking to you from within. Not what people are saying. They said you are low. The Spirit of God said, don't even mind him. If you know how low he is coming today. Don't even mind him. Move on. Don't answer. Don't say anything. Move forward. Go. Slow down. See, that's it. He said, it is the activity of the Holy Ghost. That Spirit with capital S, that is the Holy Ghost said, is the Lord. And where that spirit is, that spirit in you, everywhere you go, freedom will come to you. When people are in bondage all around you, you'll be free. You'll be free. You know why you'll be free? You'll be free because you are not dictated by what people are saying and what they are seeing. This is where your freedom is coming from. You are free from your spirit, from your being. You are free. You take pleasure in that which you are wearing. No matter what people will say. They will be boasting of how much and how good and you name it. 
that they have. But you are content with the little that you have because you are coming up. The Lord is working you out. The Lord is working you out. It's just a matter of time. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 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 And the new century says, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Liberty, freedom, freedom. So you can see that when people are claiming their freedom, you see where freedom is coming from. Freedom does not come to anybody without the Lord. Freedom does not come to anybody without the Lord. Freedom proceeds from our Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit, the Holy Ghost. It is when the Holy Ghost is at work in one's life that there can be freedom. You see, so when the woman is contending, contending against the husband, I want my freedom. You want your freedom, turn your life to Christ. Turn your life to Christ. Then the true freedom will come to you. The man is also saying the same thing. I want my freedom. You want your freedom, turn your life to Christ. The reason why so much struggles are going on is because you are contending from within. You are battling your own soul. You are battling your own shadow. Running life, chasing your own shadow. Like a dog that wants to catch its, 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 its tail. Circle. Living in circle. What is it that you have not done before? What do you want to display to people that they have not seen before? What house do you want to build that somebody has not built that before? What do you want to have that no one had had that before? By the wisdom of Solomon, he said, vanity is upon vanity. All is what? Vanity. Let me turn on to the Lord. And if the spirit of the Lord is with me, then I shall be free. Then I will be free. Then I will live my life in great freedom. Amen and amen. We are bringing everything to an end. So in verse 18 of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, But we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody should say Amen. The healing power in scriptures is amazing. Do you know how healing will come forth? Let me tell you. The scripture that we just read together is the process of healing, freedom, liberty. He said, this is what one must do. After you have turned, after you have decided that from now onwards you are not going to be an actor in life anymore. From now onwards, you are not going to be hypocrite any, anymore. From now onwards, you are not just going to be evil anymore. From now onwards, you are not going to be good. Just to maintain the image that people will say you are good anymore. But now onwards, you're going to live according to the sight of God. You have turned everything to the Lord. He said, how do you do? He said that, let God be a glass before you. The mirror. You know, you know how before you go out, especially the women, you check every single, uh -huh, and then the makeups and everything. Uh -huh. He said, God will become your glass. We all, with open face, beholding in a glass, the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord meaning that you following the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ. Beholding in the glass. So you see yourself and you are following the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ. Automatically are changed into the same image from glory to glory. You know how Christ will walk from one step to another and taking you higher and higher. Then when you look at him, Jesus is your mirror. He said, as you keep looking, 
the reflection of the image of Christ is going to be upon you. You are going to be glorious and brightening. Automatically, he is going to change you from glory to glory. Amazing. I don't know how practical this must be. You try to explain these things to somebody, it is hard because it's a life that one must live. It's a life that one must live. From image to the same image from glory to glory. And you know who is doing that work? Did you see in the scripture who is doing the work as you look at Jesus as the author and the finisher of your faith who is the mirror whose radiance reflects on you and automatically you start also shining and moving from glory to glory. He said, even as by the spirit of the Lord, the work of the Holy Ghost, even as by the spirit of the Lord, is the Holy Ghost. You will, you will get time to see. You know, some people, are, they think that the work of the Holy Ghost is only when you, you come and you are speaking in tongues. That is all. No, the Holy Ghost, he's every single day helper working from within for the outward transformation to be seen from glory to glory <laughs> from God glory to glory it is the work of the Holy Ghost don't worry the Holy Ghost in you is working you out anywhere that you go anywhere that you go so now we are done new century version of 2 Corinthians 3 18 he said our faces then are not covered when the Holy Ghost is at work our faces then are not covered we all show the Lord's glory and we are being changed to be like him this change is in us brings ever greater glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Ever greater glory which comes from the Lord which is the Spirit. This is completely the opposite of what women are doing. I shouldn't say women because it's today it's not only women that are putting on makeups. Men also are doing it. He said, as the woman will be looking at the mirror and be touching, 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 like what my wife did. She, she went home, she did that. I did not recognize my own wife. Amen and amen. He said that the Holy Ghost, as you take Jesus Christ as your mirror with the work of the Holy Ghost, without you making any effort, but concentrate on Jesus and the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every single crooked way in your life will be straightened. And everything shall turn unto God's glory and you shall be glorified. One degree of glory to another. This is practical Christianity. From now onwards, if this, this word of God, look at how many we are today. They said that there is, a, I don't know what, blockage on Lake Shore. But it has nothing to do with the blockage of the heart. Some people mingle, mingle, mingle to make it. Be serious about your God, your Christian walk. We have people sitting at home. And they are members of this ministry. And it is Sunday. How can you? Don't you have the, the urge to come and hear what God has for you? This is not, I can follow it from home. You cannot have fellowship from home. Internet will not give you fellowship. You can be hearing it. But if you are close and you are part of this ministry, you, you must come and be impacted. Because in the presence of the Lord, did you hear? Looking at him alone, the glorious radiant, that takes us from one degree of glory to another. Never miss church for anything. Never. 
May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless his word in your life. May you live your life being transformed by the word of God. In Jesus' name, you have come to worship. Let's say amen. Amen. God bless you.